Whenever I mention DLSS3 frame generation in any of my videos, I always get a bunch of comments and they're, they're split. A lot of people are saying this is an absolute marketing gimmick that Nvidia invented just to double bar graphs in their marketing slides and try to sell you their 4,000 GPUs and justify their inflated price tags. Whereas I get a bunch of other people in the comment section saying this is an absolutely killer feature. It is revolutionary. It can double frame rates. It is fantastic. Now, now, where is the actual truth on this, and where are these opinions coming from? Well, first of all, one of the issues with DLSS frame generation is that you can't actually experience it through a YouTube video. Most people don't have a 4000 series uh, GPU, which means they've never actually experienced DLSS 3 frame generation. Now, let, let's talk about this. So what actually is frame generation? Does it really double frame rates? What are the downsides? Is it a gimmick or is it a game changer? Well, let's quickly sum up what it is. And I know some of you guys already know, but just short version. Basically, what it does is it delays showing you a real frame that the game engine has generated in order to insert an AI generated fake frame right before that. And it does this every other frame, which is how it can almost double frame rates, although in reality it's usually a little less than doubling and in some cases a lot less than doubling and I'm not quite sure why it doesn't always just double it, but there must be some kind of overhead going on in there. Now this brings up some obvious issues and this is where the people saying this is an absolute gimmick uh, are coming from. Notice I said it has to delay showing you a real frame in order to insert a fake frame before it. That means it does increase the latency of the game. It decreases the game's responsiveness when you're playing it. Now, the other thing is these are fake frames. In other words, this game, this frame is not generated by the game engine, so it is not responsive to your inputs, and you're not actually seeing any, um, like, like if you're playing a competitive game, if an enemy peeks out from behind a corner, even though you have more frames, you will actually see that later than when it actually would have happened if you were not using DLSS frame generation. At least if you have reflex enabled on both of those, then that's a whole other thing. But anyway, the point is, it slows down the responsiveness of the game, and these are AI generated frames, which means they don't look as good as real frames. Some of them look almost as good, or almost indistinguishable, but there can be weird things that happen to the image quality because it's taking the the next frame, it's taking the previous frame, and it's taking some information from the game engine, motion vectors, things like that, to get an idea of where things on the screen are going. But sometimes it just does not have information about certain parts of the image, or it guesses wrong about what those would look like, and then that gets you frames that don't quite look right. Now, here's the problem though. When you judge it based on all of those problems, this absolutely sounds like a marketing gimmick that nobody would ever use. It slows down your game and it looks bad. However, that's not the experience I've had actually using it in certain games. Although I think this is a very game to game subjective idea. So let's talk about that. So first of all, um, like, like I said, there's the two issues. There's the latency issue and there's the image quality issue. So what about the latency issue? Unless you're playing a competitive multiplayer game that you take extremely seriously, I do not think the latency issue actually matters. As long as your base frame rate, the frame rate you're getting without frame generation, is high enough. Because, uh, for example, I've got the, the screenshot right here. We've got The Witcher 3 here, and I'm doing frame generation off versus frame generation on. The average PC latency is reported at 64.2 milliseconds um, with frame generation off, and 76.4 milliseconds with frame generation on. So we gained about 12.2 milliseconds of latency by enabling frame generation. That isn't especially noticeable, especially like, I think that maybe some of you guys will hate me for this, but I think The Witcher 3 um, is best played on a controller. When I enabled frame generation playing this game on a controller, I absolutely could not tell a difference in the PC's responsiveness. It felt good either way. It felt like about 60 frames per second should feel. Also, a lot of times the game is getting Nvidia Reflex added to it, to support frame generation and would not otherwise have had that available. So your latency actually would have been a bit worse anyway if they hadn't implemented frame generation. But you do have the choice of whether to implement that um, 
or not once once it's in the game. So I mean, I, I think it is fair to compare uh, on and off uh, frame generation with reflex enabled on both, because you will have the option to enable reflex without frame generation in any game that has frame generation. Anyway, so in other words, I think if you're not if you're just playing a single player game and you have a decent baseline frame rate, especially if it's a single player game that you'd be playing on a controller. I think the, the latency issue is a non-issue. If you're playing a competitive game and you want to see the enemy peek around the corner a, 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 ev with, like as soon as you possibly can because one millisecond, who fires first in CSGO, not that CSGO supports frame generation, but you get the idea, who fires first by one single millisecond could determine who wins that game. That matters, right? So even if it's only 12 milliseconds and 12 milliseconds doesn't feel like that big of a deal, you know, then um, in a single player game, in a competitive game, you wouldn't want to use it. You'd want to decrease your uh, your graphic settings as much as possible just to get your competitive edge, and that's not going to change. So in other words, I don't think this fits well into competitive games. Also, I'm saying this 12 milliseconds as just a random example. I have noticed the latency difference can be, it can be much smaller than that. It can also be much more than that. And it just really depends on the game and the exact situation in the game. And I don't have enough data to give you some kind of average. And I think averages hide results anyway. All I can tell you is again, I think this is a technology that is best experienced in person. And in the single player games I've used it in, latency just has not been a problem. Now, if the base frame rate was low enough, that might be more of a problem. So I think as this as frame generation gets implemented on lower end hardware, because currently we only have it on the 4080 and the 4090, that's where I wonder if frame generation latency issues could end up being more of a problem. So frame generation latency, not a big deal in single player games. I don't really notice it. If you're using a mouse in a first person shooter, that's where it's most noticeable. Um, in Portal RTX, which is a first-person mouse aim, not really a shooter, but, um, and then in, um, oh, what's it called, Warhammer 40k Darktide, I can, if I'm really, like, trying to notice it, I, I can maybe feel a slight increase in the floatiness of my mouse, guys, but it's incredibly minor, and again, those are really, I mean, Warhammer 40k Darktide, it's not really a single-player game, but it's like PvE, right? You I, I seem to be just shooting, you know, AI monsters. It didn't really affect my aim, it was fine. Okay, so... In my opinion, the bigger problem to DLSS 3 frame generation is the image quality. That's where it has bigger issues, and this completely depends on the game. So I've played this in a lot of games, some for more extended periods of time, some for less, and in some games, the image quality is fine. I actually played uh, Plague Tale Requiem, which has uh, frame generation, um, the last several hours of the game, I played with uh, with frame generation on, and I'd frequently turn it off just to compare, and I absolutely loved it. Frame generation solved a, a big problem in that game, which is CPU limitations. That game can become CPU limited, and this is actually the biggest uh, the biggest deal in my opinion for DLSS frame generation. When you are CPU limited it can help you where other things can't. And I'll come right back to that. I wanted to talk a little bit more about image quality first. So hang on to that CPU limited idea, because in my opinion, that's the biggest selling point for DLSS 3. Anyway, image quality. Like I said, Plague Tale Requiem thought it looked great. Witcher 3, I haven't played for as many hours as I did Plague Tale Requiem, but in the time I have played with it, I actually think frame generation is looking good. And once again, it's solving a CPU limit issue that I couldn't solve in any other way other than turning ray tracing off, but then I'm still CPU limited. Anyway, we'll get back to the CPU limited issue. Just hang on to that idea. Um, but then in games like Spider-Man Remastered, I actually hated the image quality of frame generation and I turned it off. And that was actually my initial impression. That was the first game that I tested. So my initial impression of frame generation was a lot more negative than it is now that I've tried it in a lot a wider variety of games. Spider-Man moves so quickly over a variety of background objects, buildings. We have webs shooting out all over the place. There's a lot of um, HUD elements up on the screen o interacting and passing over other objects. And those are all places where frame generation has issues with the image quality, and I actually found it noticeable. And I would not use it, even though it did, again, help me with the CPU limited issue. Although in that game, 
while I was CPU limited, it was at a high enough frame rate that I wasn't as compelled to want to solve the problem using DLSS 3. So really, Spider-Man Remastered is the game that I've played the most where I had the biggest problem with the image quality. Now, in other games that I've only briefly tested out, um, or that I've seen, you know, other reviews on things like that, a lot of times it's like HUD elements. Like in F122, uh, we've seen a lot of footage where like the name, the names of drivers floating over their cars, that kind of a thing. The text interacts weird because it doesn't realize it's text, and so that looks bad. Uh, certain HUD elements, things like that. So there are absolutely games where I think it's just an image quality issue, and that's something that I hope can improve over time, although I'm sure there are limits to this technology, and it will probably never be perfect as far as the kind of image quality that you could get. I wonder if somehow they could get the HUD elements to render uh, at a real uh, a real frame and then everything else maybe do frame generation. I don't know if that's possible. Something like that might be really useful. But in general, um, I think, in my opinion, image quality is the biggest issue in, in for single player games. Multiplayer games, latency might matter. I don't think I don't think uh, for single player games latency is a real issue. Now, can I weigh in on is this a gimmick or is it a game changer? I think, I've answered that question for myself because the, the game I'm actually playing right now is the Callisto Protocol on PC. Now you might note the Callisto Protocol doesn't have frame generation. I know, and I wish it did. I found myself really wanting to press the frame generation button while I was playing the Callisto Protocol. And that's my answer to, is it a gimmick? No, because I actually want it in a game that doesn't have it. I wasn't even thinking about it other than it just popped in my head, man, this would solve my problem right now. Now, what problem is it solving? This is where I'm coming back to the CPU limitation. Remember that one of the problems with DLSS 3 frame generation is that they're not real game engine frames. They're not frames generated by the game engine. But while that's, you know, in, in the sense it's a bug, but it's actually a feature, because these are not generated by the game engine, they are not dependent at all on your CPU. So, when you are CPU limited, which is happening in a, an annoyingly high number of games now, and I think this could be solved through better programming, for one thing, but if the games are programmed badly, this could help you out if it was implemented into the game. For example, The Witcher 3, um, when you enable ray tracing, the 4090 can't be fully utilized in a lot of scenes because in cities you become CPU limited. The game is too single thread uh, performance based, so it can't take advantage of all the threads on a powerful CPU, and a lot of times it's delivering l well less than 60 frames per second on the CPU. So no matter how much you turn down any setting except for ray tracing really, you're still, uh, you're still CPU limited. It doesn't matter how powerful the GPU gets. The 4090 is bottlenecked by the CPU due to bad coding, but there it is. Um, flipping on the frame generation button doubles the frame rate, or at least almost. And as long as it looks good and you're playing a single player game so latency isn't a big deal, it's fantastic. It solves that problem. Now, Callisto Protocol has that same issue. When you enable ray tracing, you can become severely CPU limited even when your GPU is capable of a lot more. You can see the GPU utilization will drop way below 100% because it's waiting on the CPU to feed it more information, but the CPU just can't. Um, and so you're stuck. If I could flip the frame generation button, I could basically double my frame rate in that situation, which would really help with the motion fluidity. So in essence, here's the thing about DLSS 3. I think its biggest bonus point is that it's, it, it can help you in a CPU limited situation where normal upscalers can't because normal DLSS 2 and FSR 2, things like that, reduce the GPU load, not the CPU load, so they can't help you increase your frame rate in a CPU limited situation. I would love for game developers to just program their games better. But if they don't, this can help you when other things can't. So I do actually want it in more games. Um, like I said, the image quality is a bit of a mixed bag. I think if it's available in a game, you should try it out and see what you think of the image quality. I think in some games you won't like it, in some games you will. I think um, especially games that are slower paced, 
uh, and games that have um, fewer HUD elements, like the Callisto Protocol, like I said, I really want it in that game. Um, I think this would be a great fit for those situations. So is this some revolutionary technology? Well, he here's what I hate. I, I, I don't like how NVIDIA is marketing it, because first of all, they say that it increases performance. It doesn't, it decreases performance. Performance, in my opinion, is how well the game engine is interacting with your inputs, right? So it decreases performance, but it increases motion fluidity that you're seeing on your screen. Objects can look better in motion um, if they're, uh, you know, render, if you get more frames per second. So as long as the image quality of those frames is good enough, and like I said, that's game dependent, um, then it absolutely is increasing your frame rate. What I can't stand is the marketing slides trying to show DLSS 3 frame uh, frame rates up against non-DLSS3 frame rates because those things are not created equal. The uh, DLSS3 frames don't look as good and are not as responsive as a normal frame. So this is misleading. As a math teacher, uh, this reminds me of, com of, of trying to combine unlike terms. If things are not measuring the same thing or do not create the same impact to the situation you're dealing with, you should not compare them directly. So that's the last thing I'll leave you guys on is don't get fooled by marketing claims or frame rate counters because in the past, Frames per second has been a measure of two things. It has been a measure of the motion fluidity uh, of what you're seeing on your screen, and it has been a measure of the game's responsiveness. DLSS 3 increases the frame rate, but decreases the game's responsiveness. So this is not an apples to apples comparison. And the frames don't look quite as good. So whether the, you notice it or not, I think depends on the game, but they should not just be stacked up in an apples to apples comparison. So DLSS 3 in summary, I think is a fantastic technology that especially shines in CPU limited situations in single player games the, the, where the um, quick input response times aren't that big of a deal, especially if you're playing on a controller. And I think the image quality is best. Uh, I think, well, sorry, the, I think the latency is least noticeable, especially if you're playing on a controller. I don't think you'd ever notice it. And if you're playing on a mouse, it's it can be more noticeable if you're at a lower baseline frame rate. But in the end, I think if it's a single player game, the, the latency really isn't that big of a deal. Um, I think that the image quality is gonna vary wildly game by game. And I think in some games, especially if it's a slower paced game with, um, with few HUD elements on the screen, I think it's gonna really shine. So overall, I think frame generation is cool. It is not a gimmick. And I think it's just not quite as big of a game changer, at least yet, as NVIDIA wants to sell you in their marketing slides. But it is not a technology that you should completely write off. Also, I think it's only fair to mention that AMD has announced a competing technology with FSR3, um, which will hopefully be a, a solid competitor to what NVIDIA is doing here. The only downside is we don't have it yet, so I can't test it out and give you some hands-on stuff. Although the advantage there would be that AMD likes to go more open source route, support a wider variety of hardware, whereas NVIDIA wants to lock things down currently just to their 4000 series. So it'll be really interesting to see where these technologies go and especially hopefully both both companies kind of push each other to, to further develop things. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section, especially if you've experienced it in person. Because in YouTube videos, it cannot accurately represent the experience of actually using it because the YouTube video, you cannot feel the responsiveness you can look at latency counters, but you can't feel the responsiveness for yourself and tell if you actually notice it. And also YouTube videos are only at 60 frames per second, whereas the games aren't running at 60 frames per second, and the image quality issues are less noticeable at high frame rates. And so if you slow down the footage to emphasize the problem, you are no longer showing what it's actually like to experience the technology. So that's all I've got to say here, is if you're trying to judge off of YouTube videos that are slowing down the footage um, and giving you latency measurements, that's all well and good. I think that's great, but it's not the same thing as actually using it. And I like using it in certain games and not others. I hope all of you have an excellent day.